Hello and welcome to the 2020 Charles S. Roberts Awards, the awards for wargaming excellence in board gaming chosen by the people. I'm Dan Pencaldi of No Enemies Here, and it was an honor and it's a pleasure to have been chosen to host these awards. And I'm Grant. Yeah, he's Grant. Whatever. Well, yep. Next week, Saturday, 25th, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Why Eastern Standard Time? Because it's my time. Because I did the videos and I want to put it out when I want to put it out. That's it. Finally. Hey, this took a while. A lot of work went into this. I mean, a lot of work went into it on my end. And that's nothing compared to what Tinto did. Getting all these people, all the presenters, putting all this together. <clears throat> Remember, the guy's got a life, huh? I don't have a life, that's why, whatever. So, for me, that's the big news. Um, it's, good. it's a lot of fun. <clears throat> There's actually, Stuka Joe wrote a piece with his, his brother, very reminiscent of the name Charlie. And look, this is a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun doing this. Um, I hope you people have a lot of fun watching it. It's nothing is perfect, <coughs> but everything is. <laughs> so, remember, Saturday night, get comfy in your couch, pop your cigar in your mouth or your pipe. I, I like the pipe. I mean, I smoked cigars for 30 years, and also the pipe. And I, I like the pipe, but I don't smoke anymore. Like but anyways, relax, take your favorite beverage. This opener that you saw here is not going to be the same opener as in Saturday Night's show. Yeah, I was wearing a black shirt, but Tim Toe's wearing a tux. Can't compete with that. So, guys, girls, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of fun. I'll see you there. level simulation of a hypothetical World War II in Europe that began in the fall of 1938. What you get with this game is a 22 by 34 inch map and 176 die cut counters. And from Sergio Schiavi, Di Simula Edizione, from Salerno to Rome, World War II, the Italian campaign, 1943 to 1944. This game allows you to simulate the first 10 months of the military campaign in Italy during World War II, from the landing in Salerno to the liberation of Rome. Hello, 
This is Ricardo Mazzini and this week's greatest day in history and games is October 20th, 1600. The day when the fate of Japan was decided by a single battle, Sekigahara. We are at the apex of the Sengoku Jidai, the age of the warring states, a period of constant conflict between rival clans and the Japanese islands which started in 1467 at the end of the Ashikaga Shogunate. The country had finally found some semblance of peace under the great warlord Oda Nobunaga and his successor, Toyotomi Hideyoshi. But Toyotomi died in 1598, leaving his five years old only son Hideyori under the custody of a series of regents. The last of these regents was Toyotomi's trusted aide Ishida Mitsunari, supported by the clans of the western half of the country. However, Soon the majority of the eastern clans relied around the much respected and admired general Tokugawa Ieyasu. Tokugawa had transformed the backwater province of Edo, modern-day Tokyo, into a fertile and rich land, gaining access to plentiful resources. Ishida could not tolerate such competition, and so tried to provoke Tokugawa into open confrontation, first by trying to murder him and then by offending him through the actions of one of his vassals, Uesugi Kagekatsu. Tokugawa, who was probably counting on Ishida's arrogance, responded in kind by mounting a powerful quick offensive to the east, leaving behind only a small, a small force to deal with the rebel Uesugi, he marched straight towards his rival. Ishida moved to help the allied Mori clan, laying siege to the Fushimi castle loyal to Kokogawa. He gained control of the castle only ten years later, but by then the strategic Gifu castle had fallen to Kokogawa. Surprised, Ishida had to retreat immediately, marching back to Sekigahara. The after some days of troublesome march under the rain, Ishida stopped and waited for his enemy. Quite soon, Tokugawa's army arrived, but not in a good shape either. Tokugawa's son, who commanded half of the army, was still engaged in the siege of Ueda Castle, 200 kilometers away. The next day, however, Tokugawa attacked. He was confident that his men had a small quantity of archibus with their matchlocks still dry and ready for battle, and most of all, had made contact with some commanders in the enemy field. And actually, the Battle of Ekegara was a collection of treason and double crossings on both sides that would have made Machiavelli proud. At one point, Tokugawa eventually had to start firing against the commander Kobayakawa Hideyaki to persuade him to finally fight on his side. In the end, Hishida's Western Army was overwhelmed. In just seven weeks of fighting, Tokugawa had vanquished his rival and secured his position as shogun. His descendants will rule Japan for more than two centuries. Now, everyone is fascinated by Japanese history, and today we will be speaking about a game so beautiful and elegant that it will not look out of place in the background of a movie by master director Kurosawa Akira, Sekigahara by GNT Games. This title enriches the classical block game genre with some subtle touches that really bring to life all the intrigues, machinations and deep strategy of the conflicts of this period. Using a card-driven combat system somewhat reminiscent of, of, reminiscent of two other classics dedicated to uh, the 18th century European wars, Friedrich and Maria by Richard Siegel, in Sekikahara you may lead great armies all around Japan but you must have the right cards in your hand to see them actually fight in the field, or maybe to induce the enemy troops to betray your adversary. This great tension is made even greater by many small bits of chrome like special troops, the ferocious and proud Mori clan, and extensive siege craft, all of them included in a really simple and essential rule set. Every game of Sekigahara is much different from the, from the previous ones, with the unpredictability of the cards and the random recruitment system, creating many possible paths to victory. Also, GMT recently announced to be working on another similar title, while Compass Games will soon publish Granada, Last End of the Moors, which uses the same system. In the meantime, give Sekigahara a try. It's a gaming experience 
truly unlike any other. So, that's it for this week. See you on the next Battlefields. Ciao! Designed by John Paniski, and the map is by the great Rick Barber. Roma Victrix. This is a game which endeavors to recreate the conflicts between Rome and her neighbors to achieve and maintain that dominance. A game designed by Paul Calio. Modern War Volume 2 The Enemy is at the gates, the battle for Berlin. This is based on a Series by Adam Starkweather and a graphic artist is Antonio Pinar. This is the Cold War gone hot. And another Quadri game, Eastern Front Operational Battles. So this is a Quadri game, obviously from Compass Games, and it's four Eastern Front games by John Thiessen. Tony of Tony's Bored Life continues his Liberty or Death Parts 3, 4, and 5, a game designed by Harold Buchanan, also a standard combat series game from MMP called Rock of the Marne. Turns 3. Hi, D. Jester here. Let's talk about the week that was on our YouTube channel. So, Saturday and Sunday, we got two different episodes of The War Room, where we get to talk about all things wargaming with our good friend, uh, Rough Swordsman Wargamer and Tony's Board Life. Then we did a live unboxing of the second edition upgrade kit for Adian Abyss. Again, part of the coin game system by GMT. So if you want to upgrade your first edition to second edition and you want to know what comes in the package, be sure to check out that episode. Then we've been playing a lot of coin games recently on our channel. So what I decided to do was do a nice three-part mini-series as a tutorial introduction to the coin system for new players out there, kind of talking about the mechanics of the game, how the game operates, what the different pieces and the regions and the cards and everything and how they kind of blend all together. And to go along with that, we started a brand new Cuba Libre, again from the coin game system by GMT. And we're using that as kind of a companion to our tutorial series so you can see how the game actually plays with the rules that we just covered in the tutorial series. And then we ended the week by doing another episode of our ongoing campaign, the Short War, Obama, Obama's War with a Distant Plane, again, part of the coin game system by GMT. Everyone have a great week. We'll see you next week. And you can check out a sick flick on The Horror Geek with a movie that changed all movies in history called Blood Feast. Lock and Load was live with On The Air with Lock and Load Publishing Season 2 Episode 8 with Keith Tract and David Heath, the OG, and Stéphane Tanguy from Quebec. Yeah! And they're discussing Blood and Fury World at War 85. This is a new expansion, plus other things, I'm sure. And also, the OG is doing a quick update on some additions to Lock and Low Tactical Modules for Tabletop Simulator. The man famously known as Callendale, Enrico Viglino, has quite a few videos out this week. He finishes up, of, or does an invasion, part number nine, also, starts up a playthrough of Shores of Tripoli with a review and an old SPI game called Leningrad. And Tim, 
of Hairbrain Games, the Forgotten Almond Brother. It's reviewing Solar Storm. And the war game philosopher A.J. Toynbee of Hexes and Soldiers plays Command and Color Napoleonics, scenario Borodino, the 7th of September, 1812. And he continues with a game that I'm familiar with. It's an ambush type game, but this time the protagonist is a tank. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, open fire. This is a micro review. Mo of Mo's Game Table has a couple of videos out. The first one being The Shores of Tripoli from Fort Circle Games. It's a preview. And he also previews Nemesis, Burma 1944 from Legion War Games. Voynich TV checks out Stalingrad Inferno on the Volga, a game by Emanuele Santandrea. The chief of bonding with board games is reviewing a Fort Circle game called The Shores of Tripoli. Of Swordsman War Gamer has a couple of videos out. One is a playthrough of Enemy Coast Ahead, The Doolittle Raid from GMT Part 5. And he unboxes in his Open the Box segment Army Group Center from 3W Games. And Cody of the Discriminating Gamer is self-deprecating while he reviews Combat Commander Europe by GMT, designed Chad Jensen. And Charles Cab, real name Cabell, is making a Command and Colors board for all the games. Check it out. And Tim Korchnoy of Barbob Wargaming is looking at World at War magazine number 74, The Munich War, and he reveals a big surprise. Hey, it's Dave here. Welcome to the Centurions Review, the punk rock band of war game review institutions. First game we're doing a first look at on our YouTube channel is Dungeons and Dragons Supplement Number Two Blackmore from Dave Arneson. This is the 1975 edition. It's the first edition. It has uh, additional character classes, additional mar monsters, additional treasures, additional spells, and it also has a scenario for running campaigns underwater which is kind of cool as far as i know this is the first uh D, D product that did that it's got some interesting artwork from the old days too next one we're doing a first look at is eighth army operation crusader from game designers workshop this is about the winter battles for tobruk in 1941 the rule set looks pretty simple and easy to learn but the scenarios it says take uh two how many hours uh Take two to four hours, so it's a long playing game. And then as far as reviews, uh, this week I posted a review of Crete. Uh, my friend Len and I reviewed it. And then next week we will be posting a review of Red Devils. Red Devils is about the British Airborne at Arnhem in Holland. And last game we're doing a first look at on YouTube is Bobby Lee, The Civil War in Virginia from 1861 to 1865. This, this is a block game. It concentrates on the battles um, in the terrain that was between Richmond, Virginia and Washington, D.C., that 100-mile uh, stretch there. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys soon on our website and on our YouTube channel. Have a good evening. Wayne Hansen plays... Claws of the Tiger, the Japanese invasion of Malay, and also he does a quick versus video of Jeff Davis, the Confederacy at War. Gimpy, the Gimpy Gamer, continues his playthrough of soldiers in postman's uniform, his final thoughts, and also Ager Sanguinis, review through part four. A game for gamers, made by gamers, by Flying Pig Games. And the gentlemen of the Player's Aid are unboxing Crusader Kingdoms from Worthington Publishing and also unboxing Twin Peaks from GMT Games. And Ricardo Mazzini in his Warlog Addendum, he does a look-through of La Syrie, Les Maréchaux. Seek Out and Play has the fourth and final video in a series of how to play Sherman Leader by DVG today, post-combat.
Counterproductive Games takes a look at A Matter of Honor by Tiny Battle Publishing. This is a playthrough, part one. Kilroy was here is introducing and unbagging Platoon Commander India Pakistan War 1965. He also unboxes Death Valley, Battles for the Shenandoah, and an exploration of strategic level American Civil War games. The OG, the original Grognard, does a solo gameplay of the Shores of Tripoli, and also part two of the Shores of Tripoli. Marco Omni Gamer takes a look at one small steps game. Mark McLaughlin's War and Peace review. Napoleon's Triumph does a quick report for all bridges burning, a game published by GMT. Jan Heidemann never let's play history. It's taking it easy. School, work, life, you know what I'm saying? Now he's giving me a bit of a break. He plays. Fields of Glory, Empires, also Strategic Command, World War II, War in Europe, Fields of Glory 2, and ends it off with Fields of Glory, Empires. And on the big board, Kevin takes a look at the quick reference flip cards from Lock and Load Tactical, and also MBT's 4th Canadian Motorized Brigade Scenario Wrap-Up of Beans and Bullets, Scenario 31. And the man who goes by the name of Jeff. Whoa, Jeff. Man, Hans Jan, uh, Jan Heinemann has got nothing on you this week. <clears throat> okay, so Jeff continues with uh, Thunderbolt Apache Leader with Rules plus Expansion Playthrough Part 8, Part 9, Part 10, 11, 12. And he does Afghanistan. That means... That's a new scenario. Parts 1 through 4. And starts Tiger Leader with the expansion. The playthrough parts 1 with the setup. Part 3 pre-combat. And the first week of combat. The soft-spoken but formidable foe! Jonathan Townsend plays Von Manstein's Backhand Blow, a game by GMT designed by Dirk Blenemann. GMT has posted the final rules for 1918-1919 Storm in the West, so Stephen Dolges has taken a quick look. The Oaken Knight continues his short campaign of Normandy 44, a game designed by Mark Semenich, published by GMT. Ben of Harsh Rules, breaking down board games, is taking a look at Axis and Allies Europe. Overview, setup, and rules. designer until the bitter end tanks this is a print and play world war ii war game for solitaire and two players about tank battles personally i think matt white should start boxing his games yeah on in conversation i was having a conversation with tank commander major Gregory M. Smith, and we were talking about his new game concerning tanks. Harold Buchanan and the San Diego Historical Games Convention, they're doing an online event November 
13th, 14th, and 15th. Sign up. Places are limited. To all my supporters, you have the right to advertise your wares here and sell them. If you'd like to be a supporter and advertise your wares, I'd be happy. Hey guys, Dave again. I'm selling a few games on my website. The first one is the Trojan War from Metagaming. This is Meta History number two. It's about the game of gods and heroes. What's interesting about this game is you can have uh, gods intervene and stuff, which is kind of cool. Let me show you the components. It's unpunched. It's got some uh, line drawings of hoplites and stuff on the counters. Actually, it's pronounced oplite, I believe, in Greek, but it, uh, everywhere else in the world it's pronounced hoplite. And a lot of informational markers and stuff. You have chariots and so forth. Then the rule book is a uh, nice rule book. I think it's how many pages? It's got to be about 14 pages or so. It's an easy game to learn, though. Includes a little dice, too. And let me pull out the map. Like all metagaming games, the map is pretty simple, but that, that's what's to be expected with metagaming. So it's got a wall from Troy here, and then the Greek sea wall. And you keep track of victory points on the side in the game turn. This one's selling for $29.99 on my website with free U.S. shipping. And the next one I'm selling is Bobby Lee, The Civil War in Virginia from 1861 to 1865. It's a black game. Let me show you the components. Like all these black games, the components are good. Here's the blacks. They're unstickered. There's the stickers that you put on them. As you can see, what's good about the blacks is you can have more than two steps. So as you can see, some of the units actually have four steps. And a lot of these black games allow you to turn the blacks where the opponent can't see them. So you got kind of a fog of war. Here's the tactical maps. Two dice. Some errata. And then two player aids here. And the rule book. Rule book's about 16 pages. The map, it's not a mounted map, but it's not a paper map either. It's more like, I, I call these cardstock maps. It's a much more rigid material than you would get in a paper map, but it's not as rigid as you would get in a mounted map. But as you can see, it looks pretty good. And on the side here, it's got all the useful uh, tables that you're gonna need during the game. And you keep track of the months over here and the weather and so forth. This one I'm charging $45 with $14 shipping. This is the second edition of the game. Thanks, and if, if you'd uh, like to order them, I'll have my URL on the screen here and my email address if you want to contact me. Have a good evening. Another week, another show. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, support this channel it really helps and have a great week that's it i got nothing to say it was one of those weeks